In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at the basics of argumentation that you'll be able to apply for about 80% of the critical reasoning style questions that you'll encounter in the verbal reasoning section of the GMAT Focus Edition. So first, let's talk about identifying our argument tasks once again. Now, approximately 80% of your tasks within the critical reasoning format questions of the verbal reasoning section are going to be argumentation, and only about 20% are going to be inference style. And we've talked about both in our prior lessons on the critical reasoning questions. Now, your argument tasks are going to require you to apply new information from the choices to the prompt. And you can note the terms argument, conclusion, or various synonyms to indicate that you're looking at an argument task as opposed to an inference one. And there are numerous possible tasks that are going to ask you to properly affect or address the conclusion in some fashion. Strategically, you need to note the clues in the question stem to help identify both your task and honestly, in some cases, they'll even tell you what the conclusion is, which is quite helpful. You'll want to limit yourself to a single reread of the question stem stem or the argument prompt because you can't just keep going back to the problem. And if you can't readily identify the questions task or the main conclusion, you'll immediately move to eliminating, guessing, marking, and moving on in under 30 seconds because if you can't determine what you're being asked to do or you can't identify what the conclusion is, it's going to be really difficult to move forward with the problem. And now that the GMAT focus allows you to return to questions within a section. It's in your best interest to just move on even more quickly and then recognize that maybe upon a second read, you might immediately recognize what the question task is or what the argument's conclusion is with just a second look. Now, our top four argument tasks are going to be strengthen, weaken, identify an assumption, or identify a flaw. There are a bunch of ancillary argument tasks too, though, such as explain something that happens. This often is considered as a paradox. You've got to re reconcile pieces of, of information and understand why a concluding activity or a conclusion actually is able to happen. Evaluate, which means you need to find information to help determine whether or not the conclusion is viable. You can also be asked to identify the roles of boldface statements. You can be asked to find what point is at issue between multiple speakers, if there are multiple speakers. And you can also be asked more obliquely about the method of argument, the manner in which an argument progresses. Each of these is significantly less likely to show up as opposed to the top four, but with harder difficulty questions, you might see something that's a little bit more abstract. So all argumentation can be distilled into the argumentation equation, and that argumentation equation will always lead up to a conclusion. And that conclusion is going to be your explicit subjective opinion requiring some sort of support. And that support comes in the form of a premise, and that is going to be your explicitly stated set of objective facts that are intended to provide support for that objective or that subjective conclusion. Then we have what is known as the assumption, and the assumption is going to be an individual or set of facts that must be true to logically link the premise or premises to the conclusion. There are some technical synonyms for these terms that you should be familiar with. For the premise, you could also be looking at grounds, evidence, reasoning. There's a few more facts, data, just anything that indicates some sort of objective statement that's intended to support, really. Then you could also have your conclusion described as a claim, an opinion, a prediction, a recommendation, a position, a hypothesis, a theory, an argument. It's ultimately the thing that you don't necessarily believe without some sort of evidence. So how do we identify a conclusion? Well, first, we need to eliminate from consideration any clear statements of fact. Because if you have a statement of fact that is presented as objective without any interpretation required, that can't be your conclusion. It doesn't need further support. But you should never feel you need outside knowledge to evaluate the facts in any critical reasoning little prompt. Only universal knowledge and explicit statements can be applied. So what do I mean by that? Well, when it comes to universal knowledge, it's things that are true all around the globe. So things like, if you try to breathe water, you will drown. That would be universal knowledge. Earth has one moon. That would be universal knowledge. Freedom of speech being part of a democracy would not be universal knowledge because that may not be the same throughout the world. 
and only the explicit statements and universal knowledge can be applied to consider a conclusion and properly address the task. Generally, at most two statements will possibly be subjective and not facts. Not saying that it can't be more, but usually you're going to have some clearly stated facts. Once you've eliminated from consideration the statements of facts, of fact, you then want to consider the two remaining statements as just A and B. And you need to evaluate the relationship between those statements as either providing or requiring support. The statement that requires additional support, meaning you don't believe it on its own, is your main conclusion of the argument. So if statement A were to support statement B, then statement B must be the conclusion because it's the thing that required support. If, however, statement B supported statement A, then statement A would be the conclusion because it is the thing requiring support. Your conclusion must always be the single statement in the argument that by itself stands alone, least unsupportedly, for lack of a better term. So let's move on and take a look at an example and how we can try to identify a conclusion. So we've got this example here, and we're talking about Bill and Yamit. So let's just read this, and we're then going to eliminate clear statements of fact as possible conclusions. So we've got a local official who's stating, for many years in Yamhill, bears were a present, con a constant presence in local na in neighborhood yards. Then Bill moved in, and the number of bear sightings dropped pre precipitously throughout Yamhill. Well, both of those are just facts. The bear presence in Yamhill, fact. Don't have anything to argue with there. Bill arrived, and the bear sightings dropped. Again, a fact. There's nothing to argue the data. There's no reason or uh, standing to do that. We just have to accept it. Then we've got to consider the remaining bits to determine which direction the support is going to go in. So Bill supposed he might be driving the bears away, but city records will promptly show a likely cause other than Bill. So Bill supposed he might be driving bears away is prevented as fact, even though we're talking about Bill's supposition and Bill's opinion is an opinion but it's not the opinion of this argument. It's not the main conclusion, and it's not supported by the rest of the sentence. A cause likely other than Bill, although it's a contrast, is going to be supported by city records, theoretically. And that's the main conclusion. So we don't necessarily believe that city records will promptly show a cause other than Bill without some sort of reasoning. And honestly, that makes this not a great argument, but that's sometimes how these are structured. You've got to break it down and go, actually, I need some evidence to show why city records are going to show a likely cause other than Bill. So let's take a look at a sample problem using this exact same scenario. So as always, we read the question stem first to identify the argument task and set up the scratch pad with the choices so we can see which of the following would most weaken the local official's argument. We see the word weaken, we see the word argument, we're clearly dealing with an argument task. So then step two, we're going to read the paragraph as presented. Now, we've just read this, so we know that the nearly verbatim conclusion is city records will promptly show a likely cause for driving the bears going away, basically, other than Bill. So we would shorthand that in our mind. City records will show Bill not the cause of the bear sighting decrease. And then we have to broadly predict what the answer should do to accomplish the task. In this case, we want to find info to show that city records will not show a likely cause other than bail, than Bill for the drop in bear sightings. So we then will process of eliminate for a common wrong argument reasons, starting with Bill is incapable of, in, of driving away large mammals himself. This is hilarious to me, but ultimately it's going to be a reversal because if Bill can't do it, then it seems like the records might show a cause other than Bill. Of course, you might also be thinking to yourself, well, how do we know that this is going to help the city records? Either is true, but even if we kind of were to lead this through with a little bit of too much deduction, we'd say this is a reversal. It makes it seem like Bill is not the cause. Then we see choice C, Yam Hill City archives are presently available for official inquiries. Well, now we know that the city records are accessible. So that too would be a reversal because it shows that the city records could be accessed to show a likely cause other than Bill. Then we've got our vague impacts, such as Yam Hill is home to many species of bears. Wonderful. Uh, the variety in bear species is not at issue, and just because it is, I have, I have no idea what that means ultimately for whether or not 
the records will show a cause other than Bill or not, so we can eliminate choice B. Choice D, we've got Bill's neighborhood has many bear lovers. Again, wonderful. I have no idea how that would or would not affect the city record theory. But choice E, Yamhill records don't track wild animal sightings. Well, then why would the records help show a likely cause other than Bill? This shows that the records wouldn't. So choice E is our correct answer and directly accomplishes the task of weakening the argument because it shows that basically the conclusion does not have the requisite evidence or premise to support the assumptions because we're basically assuming that the records would help us evaluate the bears and Choice E is saying you can't. So let's move on over to the whiteboard and take a look at a couple more examples to see how you'll use basic argumentation to address just about every one of the argument task questions on the critical reasoning format problems for the verbal reasoning section of the GMAT Focus Edition. As always, we start just by writing out our answer choices A through E for process of elimination's sake, and we can see we're being asked for the assumption here, and we know that just means what must be as our assumption task. And so we're just going to put up here PA as our predicted assumption, and then we're going to read the statements. So our, the art critic states, while traditional art derives much of its strength and eloquence from local sources, most cultural funding programs have historically favored artists who come from somewhere else and have concentrated on delivering artistic resources or assets to communities from outside. So this is just a fact of what it's done. So that's not our conclusion. Certainly, such approaches are not made with bad intent. This is kind of an opinion. But their rigid application makes funders and policymakers blind to the artistic traditions that are of, by, and for a local community. So this, too, is going to be an opinion. So we need to consider the direction of the support. Does the first statement kind of support the second, or does the second kind of support the first? So the rigid application making funders and policymakers blind to the artistic traditions that are of, by, and for a local community has nothing to do with the approaches not being made with bad intent. If anything, it actually makes it seem like they might be with bad intent. The bad intent statement, however, basically is just an introduction leading to the second statement. So our predicted, our predicted assumption, we just need to find what must be to reasonably believe that the somewhere else French lines funders and policymakers to local art traditions. And it's a broad statement, but I need to focus on what has to be true to believe that the somewhere else people are going to be completely blinded to the local art traditions. So, choice A, traditional local art is more dependent on outside resources than our other more established artistic endeavors. Well, I don't necessarily even know from the statements that are provided what an established artistic endeavor would be. So that's going to need additional information. That's a nice, straightforward reason to eliminate. Now, local artistic traditions and programs are not frequently uncritically adopted or otherwise supported by remote patronage. Ooh, that's got some double negatives in it, doesn't it? So we'll hold that with our question mark. Then we've got cultural funding programs often require extensive application processes, which are too time consuming for underfunded artisans to complete. Okay, well, we don't know whether that's local or not when it comes to the cultural funding and the application processes. So that too is going to need additional information. 
Then the rigidity of approach required by outside funders of the arts is justified by limiting wasteful appropriation of tax dollars. Well, again, appropriation of tax dollars, that needs additional information. We're asking about them being blind to the local art, <clears throat> art tradition, so we're going to get rid of D there because tax dollars basically introduces an entirely new concept that's not relevant to the conclusion. And then recent public polls have shown that funding traditional local artists is not a priority for most modern communities. Okay, again, like the public polls, local artists, that the polls don't want to do it doesn't necessarily tell us anything about the funders and the policymakers. So this too would need additional information. And if we come back up to B, local artists to artistic traditions and programs are not frequently uncritically adopted or otherwise supported by remote patronage. Well, that would have to be true because if they were adopted uncritically, well, then it doesn't matter that the money comes from somewhere else. That somewhere else could be funding the local art traditions. And so that's why our correct answer is B, because without this assumption, The argument ultimately fails. So let's scroll on down and take a look at another example here. So as always, we'll set up the scratch work with our answer choices first. So we've got A, B, C, D, E. And we're being asked to undermine an argument. So we know we're dealing with an argument task. And undermine really just means weaken. I just put the word weak in there, and we'll just put PW for predicted weakened. So we'll read from the beginning. Economist says, despite tremendous potential resulting from Brazil's natural endowments and untapped land, several important factors are likely to slow agricultural expansion. Well, this likely right here shows me that this is more of an opinion than a definitive statement of fact. So that might be our conclusion. Now, much of the country's available farmland is in areas that lack ready access to transportation infrastructure. Well, that's just a fact. Don't have to argue with that. Meanwhile, increasing demands for transportation storage and port infrastructure and capacity will likely outpace supply for quite some time despite continuing government efforts in this area. So this, too, is just a statement of fact. So the thing we need to weaken, and our prediction by extension, is going to be to just find info to show that these several factors pertaining to infrastructure and transportation, so transportation slash, we'll just call it IF for infrastructure. <clears throat> will not slow the B for Brazil, Ag for Agriculture expansion. So we just got to go to our answer choices and find something that shows that these factors of transportation and infrastructure not being ready will not slow the Brazilian agricultural expansion. So choice A, urban transportation networks have been an unfulfilled Brazilian political priority for many years. Well, urban, I need to know what that has to do with the farmland. So that needs additional information. Now, available farmland is a prized resource for many countries reliant upon agricultural production. Well, many countries, does that include Brazil? I have no idea. And I don't know what that has to do with whether or not the agricultural expansion is going to grow or not. So we can eliminate B for a couple of reasons. Choice C, both Brazilian agricultural exports and imports rely extensively upon land-based and seafaring transportation networks. Well, we know we lack the port infrastructure. So if this is true, we actually believe the argument more. So that's a reversal of the task. Now, Choice D, private infrastructure investment in Brazil is expected to soon eclipse similar public investment by several magnitudes of scale. This is surprisingly specific, right? And we know that 
The issue is there have been continuing government efforts for the port infrastructure and the transportation infrastructure, whereas choice D shows that there is another possible source for the money to go to these infrastructure improvements. So that does weaken the argument and show that the factors will not slow the Brazilian agricultural expansion because there's a private infrastructure alternative. And then choice E, the natural farming endowments endemic to Brazil are found in similar quantities in several other South American nations. We'll just fixate on the several other and go, that's vague. I don't know what that has to do with Brazil because we can move a little bit more quickly once we find choice D as a good check mark. So go ahead and practice some critical reasoning argument style task questions on your own, applying what we've learned in this lesson involving the argumentation equation, because it is going to take you 90% of the way at minimum to the right answer for so many of these varying tasks.